These three suspects tried to flirt with detectives while being interrogated. Okay. Can I please have a hug? Am I allowed to do that in here? Okay, so you're a Mets fan. Starting with the case of Amelia Bassoon. After two people were gunned down in their homes, Amelia was arrested, with the police speculating that she was covering up for her husband, who was the primary suspect in the murder case. She was taken to the interrogation room where she tried eagerly to win the detectives over. Immediately, questioning began. Yeah, we just moved here from New York. Oh, really? Yeah. Where in New York? Um, from Queens. Queens? Yeah. Mets? Ah, uh, Yankees. Yankees? <laughs> I think in Queens? Yeah, I know. I grew up in New Jersey. Okay, so you're a Mets fan? Well, you know, we don't have any of our own teams. So you got to have a copy off of New York. Right off the bat, Amelia initially appeared calm and uncharismatic. But upon noticing that the detective was friendly, she quickly put up a wide smile, gave him several side gazes, and pounced when the detective gave some information about himself. While the argument could be made that she was just mirroring the detective, her behavior in more serious scenarios proved otherwise. Did you say that... Did I hear you say he shot himself in the leg? Yeah, so in December, he, um... We went bowling. Okay. And we were dropping two of our friends home, and I guess he put his gun in the bottom of the driver's seat, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it was a new gun. I don't touch it. I don't know. Okay. He said it's ambidextrous, so I'm guessing the safety is on both sides, I guess. and I don't know if the safety like came off when he like picked it up, but it shot him in his thigh. Ooh, that must have hurt. Yeah. Yeah. He's lucky, you know. Those arteries well, and stuff artery, in there. Yeah. Like the bullet went around the bone and around the artery. Wow. Through. Jeez, that's lucky. I know, he's crazy. <laughs> After talking about her husband, Amelia touches her nose and palms her face, signs that she may be anxious or uncomfortable about the conversation. But this was a direct contrast to what she did next and for good cause. Amelia didn't want to talk about her husband, and so when she was done, she wanted to quickly get the detective to change the subject, and the best way for her to do that was to innocently flick her hair, bringing attention back to herself. A woman's neck can be a huge attention grabber for men, so women instinctively do this when trying to flirt, and Amelia was no different. But as the question became more serious and flirting wasn't getting her where she wanted, her true emotion started to show. Do you ever have any issues when you, when you talk to him about remembering things or anything like that? No, he told me he had brains. Like, I know like a little about himself, like mm -hmm. he had brain surgery. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, he remembers things. I don't think he forgets, really. He just... He's a little frantic sometimes because he gets like, I don't know, like, just frantic. That's it. Like, okay. he, like, when he talks to me, he mm -hmm. always brings up, like, stories about, like, his kids and, I don't know, like, traumatic things that happened to him. Mm -hmm. But that's it. I mean, that's really the only time I see him, like, ever, like, frantic. Okay. But other than that, he's so nice. Okay. Yeah, nice guy. Before the reported murder, Amelia had stolen $50,000 from a man's account at the bank where she worked. The man was related to both deceased people, and Amelia was now very different from previous times. She now clamped her arms together and literally held herself, lightly squeezing in. And this was indicative that she felt pressured and was trying to comfort herself to avoid divulging hints of deception. But the cops had already spotted several. Amelia, listen, okay, at a certain point in time, we have to move past it, all right? Mm -hmm. He's a nice guy, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you really do care about him. I do. Do you see now? Mm -hmm. But it's not like I, I don't uh, want to make it. Okay. Mm -mm. No. They continued on, and the detectives were now going in circles with Amelia for three hours. So they left the interrogation room, but a new detective came in, and Amelia had a new slate to start on. Now, here's the thing I'll get in trouble. Mm -hmm. In these cases, you can't lie. Mm -hmm. You can't, which, which means holding something back. Mm -hmm a partial truth mm -hmm. or just flat out lying mm -hmm. that is accessory mm -hmm. and you know what the charge for accessory to the homicide is amelia now restarts her flirtatious and naive demeanor and suddenly appears agreeable in an attempt to get on the detective's good side but surprisingly that worked in the detective's favor oh i don't know he didn't say anything he, but he said he shot him yeah. who do you say he shot um he said he shot the lady and the kid. And the kid. Okay. Amelia was sentenced to three years for the $50,000 theft, and her husband was sentenced to life imprisonment for first-degree murder. Although Amelia flirted with the police while married, she still had some level of respect for her husband and even tried to cover up for him. But that couldn't be said for Ashley, whose husband was left disabled after serving in Iraq. Well, he's only worked three days in the past six years, so... 
On September 8, 2017, a woman named Taylor Wright left her Florida residence with her friend Ashley, but never came back to the residence and was later reported missing. So Ashley was invited to the police station for questioning, and she made sure to look just right for the detectives. Uh, let's start with your relationship to Taylor. Okay. And y'all met how long ago? About a year ago. The interview had barely started, and Ashley had already attempted to downplay the situation. She had hoped that the detective would catch her joke and probably detect that she was just a big bundle of joy he could run into the sunset with. But he gave no audience to her unnecessary comment, giving her a much-needed reality check. And although this brought some composure to her comments, it wasn't for long. After the divorce, has Taylor ever told you, like, what age she figured out that, okay, she may be interested in women? Have you all ever talked about that? No. I mean, I've kind of laughed at her because, you know, i just been like, Taylor, how do you know? I mean, like, my literal conversation was, I'm like, either you like dick or you don't, and how do you not know that? <laughs> and she's just mm -hmm. like, well, like, I'm like, whatever. I'm like, no, how do you, <laughs> how do you not know? <laughs> I'm like, there's, I have no questions. Like, you know, I like guys. It's just not something I've ever had to ask myself, you know? At the time of this interrogation, Ashley was 40 years old, and most women that age aren't that enthusiastic about most things. With her tank top, shorts, and legs crossed in the air, she seemed like a teenager in the midst of two boys she had a crush on. But this wasn't how she normally acted, and in the next interrogation, she seemed more reserved and stable, at least for a short while. Okay, make sure it's in the same condition it was when you left it. It's a break. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, but, um, so here, black iPhone, my signature, we're turning it back over here on the 19. there. How you been doing? Yeah. Talked to Cass lately? The cops had taken her phone from her for investigation the last time she was there, and giving it back to her seemed to bring her back to her old ways, as she made a joke and then slouched over in her chair while playing with her legs, communicating an open personality to the detectives, so much so that they had quite the reaction when she mentioned that her and her husband were in an open marriage. So he does his own thing, and hey, look, it's a little cool. does exist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he does his own thing, she does her own thing. Right. You do yours, and Zach does his. Are there any other folks involved? So when you say open, it's y'all are kind of open, but you have one particular kind of person that you... I do, because I just don't choose to, like... I'm actually a very kind of shy person. Sure. <laughs> um, but it's <clears throat> Zach not so much. <laughs> It seemed Ashley was back in business, and she had finally gotten back to her usual nature. But unbeknownst to her, the detectives were playing along not only to let her indict herself, but also to study her behavior and catch her when she was being dishonest. And they did just that. Ashley had claimed Taylor left her house the day she went missing and never came back. But the detectives tracked Taylor's phone and found that it was still at Ashley's house the day after Taylor reportedly went missing. Why do you have her phone, or why is she with you? She wasn't with me, and I was unaware that I had her phone. How did you get her phone? I don't know that I have her phone. I mean, it could have been in the stuff that she had in the vehicle, but... Here's the problem with that. You say you got a text message from her the evening of the 8th saying, hey, I'm okay, I just got to get away and get my head clear. Mm -hmm. That's not possible. So phone was you know. have her phone. I don't have her phone. Just when she thought she was in the detective's good books, they began laying facts on her, and her demeanor quickly changed. She had a more defensive posture, was hinged forward with her palm covering her neck for comfort, and avoided eye contact with the detectives, something she previously didn't do. And this was mainly because she knew she was finally cornered in. Where is she at? I don't know where she is. Where is her body at? I don't know where she is. She's dead, though. You I know don't that? Believe that. That day, law enforcement found Taylor's body buried on the edge of Ashley's parents' property with a shot to the back of her head, and Ashley was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. 
Although Ashley killed her friend for money, she realized that the interrogation was mainly to talk about her missing friend, a stark contrast to Courtney Cleaning, who wasn't as concerned about her bleeding boyfriend as she was about herself. I just cannot believe the way my day went. Yeah, yeah. On April 3rd, 2022, police officers reported to the residence of an OnlyFans model and found her on the floor with her bleeding boyfriend in her arms. The man was taken to the hospital while Courtney was taken to an interrogation room where she put on quite the show for both the cameras and the detectives. You are being absolutely fucking covered in blood. Listen, you don't have to apologize, okay? I completely understand. Mm -hmm. All right? Things happen, and you can't control it. After giving a very unusual apology in a night robe, Courtney's sins were washed away by the detective, and it almost looked like he was going to give her a ride home next. But the detective was interrogating an OnlyFans model who had gotten over $3 million from flirting with men, so he was understandably mesmerized. My boyfriend just the 12th. Oh, really? Turns 28. Super well. close. Yeah. This is Assuming that he like a child hearing the ice cream truck, the detective fawned over having the same birth month as Courtney, and she gave him a sly smile he probably wasn't going to forget. In interrogations, the detective usually brings back the subject of the case after going off topic, but for some reason, Courtney seemed to be in charge of this interrogation. I know this, is, this must be very rough for you right now. No, we were supposed to go to the park with my dogs today. Like, I just did not know I expected this. Sorry. Really? That's not what we're talking about. You asked me my birthday. Yeah. Okay, what's the next question? Okay. Are you currently living there? Courtney had developed her whole career around being in front of a camera and was successful at it, so she knew when, what, and how to say anything to get what she wanted from the detectives in front of her. You guys have a history of domestic violence? Yeah. You say you've been together how long, sir? Almost two years. Almost two years. Not two years. So how many how many incidents do you think you've had? I, I don't I don't know. But we shouldn't be together. We say one or two, or just too many to. Oh to my God! Oh my God! I haven't touched my ankle. It's like what? What? Like I just want, I just want to take a shower, God. Um. Okay. No, 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 no. We can, we can. I'll get you a can just, can, I, I'm not trying to interrupt the. No, no, no. You keep on. This is absolutely the most insane shit that I think I've ever been involved in. I think and anybody that no, goes through this would be one minute she was crying while cleaning her boyfriend's blood off her ankle, and the next she had a straight tone of voice telling the detective how terrible her day was going. Courtney was visibly seeking some level of pity and sympathy from the detectives, and she wasn't afraid to mention it. Courtney had flung a knife at her boyfriend during an altercation, and even as he was in the hospital battling for his life, she thought she was having a rough day. If he's not, that's a lot worse for me. But if he's not, that's just a lot worse for everybody. Of course. Thanks. <clears throat> I need a specific question down here, please. So, see, I, so they've asked for an update, and I asked them for an update as well, so they're checking. When she finally spoke about her boyfriend, Courtney mentioned him three times and mentioned herself seven times. That was supposedly to show the sheer narcissism she had, but as if blinded by her looks, her attorney didn't see it, and he finally gave her the pity and sympathy she wanted all along. Only this time, she didn't want it. Christian is dead. Yeah. Oh my God. This is not real right, okay? Christian died? Can I please have a hug? Am I allowed to do that in here? Sure. No, no, no.
Courtney was charged with second-degree murder, with her attorney saying her actions were to save her own life. She has been denied bond and currently awaits trial.